so I'm sitting here and I'm watching my kid play football. It's actually football practice. And I thought this would be a good time to discuss the collectible show that I just went to in more detail. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd give it a little bit longer form video, uh, give you guys a little bit more information about it since it was my first time. And yeah, we'll go from there. So a lot of you will ask some very basic questions like, you know, how much was it? So it was $30 for myself because I only got half the booth. Um, and normally it would have been $60 for the booth in its entirety. And at this particular show, it was a 10 by 10 space and they give you one eight foot table. Uh, so my friend um, said he would split it with me. Great. I brought two six foot tables because I had them and we made it into a U shape where we set up all the stuff. And instead of them going into the U shape, we had them so they could go around uh, and basically give more space for walking. Um, he had tried to do it where you went instead of going around the U, you went inside the U and it's just a tiny little spot there. Uh, for people. So he said people were just jammed up and waiting to get in to look at the games. So we, I think it worked out pretty well. Um, you know, there are a lot of tables around you and other setups. So it got tight for sure when people are going down the sides um, because of the other tables and the other vendors. And it was just, it was just tight space. Um, not the best setup, but Definitely worked for us on that day. And um, what other what other questions? I know one question I got was, you know, how much did you bring? Uh, knowing you were only getting half of one booth. So I had been prepping for quite a while since he told me that I could take half his booth. I had been just kind of hoarding Game Boys, uh, I, uh, Game Boy Advance. I, I think I had five Game Boy Advance ready to go. Uh, anything from a beater all the way up to uh, a nice fire red. Um, I had taken two Nintendo 64 bundles with controllers and cables, uh, one with an expansion, one with a jumper. Uh, I took two complete Wii bundles. I took two PS2 bundles, one fat, one silver slim. So I had a lot of stuff ready to go. A lot of toys i had been collecting some clearance funkos and clearance marvel legends things um and not pricing them high i was you know just trying to hoard them on the side and putting them in a box and pricing them just for this show and i was hoping to make a little bit off those things uh, but unfortunately the toys did not do well at all the new stuff now i had been picking up some small odds and ends at garage sales like Pokemon Monopoly uh, that was complete and some Gremlins books and a He-Man book. And uh, so some of that vintage stuff did well. Uh, I had a G.I. Joe vintage puzzle and a, a vintage, um, might have been a, a Motu puzzle as well. I can't remember which one, but both those sold very quick. Um, and I was pricing things really well. So on that stuff, you know, I just didn't want to make it I wasn't trying to make eBay prices. Everything was below eBay for sure. Uh, even on the game bundles, I thought they were priced very fairly um, compared to eBay. So I expected some haggling, but man, those the consoles did not sell at all. I did not sell one console bundle the entire day. Um, yeah, and so uh, another part of information, this was a five-hour day on a Sunday normally they do very well and for this particular show um, I think I made around four hundred dollars after you know my table fee and uh, I brought a hundred dollars in change and the only app that I was allowing other you know buyers to use was uh, PayPal that's the only one I still use outside of uh, eBay it's a cash or PayPal for me, even on Facebook Marketplace. That's the only one I, it's the only one I still trust. Um, I know there's others, and I should get with the times. Venmo, Cash App, all these things, Zelle, whatever. Uh, but I, 
don't want to pay fees and I, you know, I'm sure there's a workaround like PayPal friends and family, but, um, so yeah, that's all I was taking cash and PayPal. Um, but I think I made around 400 bucks, which on the day is, doesn't sound that bad, but for the amount of work I put into that one day in terms of prepping consoles, cleaning games, uh, I had a lot of Nintendo 64 games. Uh, so, you know, you got to clean them, test them ready to go. Uh, there was a lot of stuff prepping all my DS cartridges, putting prices on them. I was packaging them. I was doing a lot of prep and it did not pay off in terms of what I wanted. So what happens next? So what happens from here? So I think what I'm going to do is keep most of the stuff I've already cleaned and prepped and gotten ready and priced you know, there's price stickers on all that stuff. I think I'm going to leave it on the side for now, not put that stuff on eBay and wait for a future possibility of another show. Um, in my area, there are three or four collectibles, flea market shows going on, you know, at, you know, a month, every month or two. So there's other opportunities to get in. Um, not all of them are like this particular collectible show, which is where I was at. And they need, they have a waiting list of people trying to get a booth. So there are other shows where I could try and get in and try to try to make some money that way. Since I've already got it prepped and ready to go, it won't be too much effort just to take it and set up a table. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, because Lord knows I got plenty of stuff in piles that I that I can still go prep for eBay. So I got a hat pile that's at least 200 hats deep. T-shirts galore. Jackets galore. I got all that stuff. I need to list the jackets for the winter um, and all that sporting stuff. I got football jerseys, all that stuff. So yeah, I don't need to I don't need to hit that video game bundle uh, of stuff to make eBay work. I got plenty of other things. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave it on the side. Uh, it's already packed up, ready to go, and uh, we'll just wait for the next opportunity. Um, it was a fun day. Um, I'll say that. I got to talk to a lot of people about games, um, a lot of people about collectibles in general. You know, a lot of people were excited to see the stuff that we had, which was nice. Um, yeah, it was just kind of fun that way. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So, I'm curious if any of you guys have done these types of shows as well but most of the shows around here um, are on Sundays and if anything keeps me from doing more of these collectible shows it will be because they're on Sundays and honestly Sundays are for me we go to church we have lunch it's a family day so it's really hard for me to commit a lot of Sundays to going to do these collectible shows. So I'm curious, is that normal for you guys? Um, are there shows on Saturdays or even Friday nights or something different? Because I'd be much more open to it on a Saturday than on Sunday. Sunday is just, that's a tough day. Uh, but yeah, my, once in a while, I'm hoping, you know, if this becomes a good second stream of uh, sales, that would be That'd be nice. I would like to find that second stream in a local way. It would be fun. It's just a kind of a, you know, pay, you know, just a different pace. So yeah. So I think that's, I think that's what I'll look for next year. Definitely try to do a few shows for sure, or sign up for one particular show and do that all year. Um, and maybe it wouldn't be every month. It'll be like once a quarter. So yeah, I think that's what we'll do. And if you guys have any questions for me about how it went or uh, pretty much anything, just uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. I hope you guys like this video, which is a little different. You know, I'm kind of, I'm in my car. I'm just chilling. Uh, but I thought I would uh, try something a little different and uh, hope you like it. We'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.